Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely morning. Today we're going to talk about Apple's new self-service repair program. This program was something that was announced five months ago, and when I talked about it, I said that we're not really going to know much about this program until the details are released and we see what they actually make available. So what I'd like to do today is actually go through this program, go through their site, and I highly suggest that you do the same and follow along with me. Regardless of whether your views align with mine or not, all I would ask you to do is actually look at the source material on the website and not believe what you're reading in the tech press. Most of what you're reading in the tech press is copied and pasted from Apple's press release releases or reworded in their own words. Very similar to what I would do in sixth grade when I didn't want to write a book report or read the book, I would go to the Spark Notes and I would reword the Spark Notes in my own words so that I could get an A on my book report without having to do any actual work. That's what you're going to find in most tech blogs. They're, they're not going to really look at this through a critical lens. They're not going to actually try and figure out what any of this means to normal people. They're really just copying and pasting Apple's press release. So what I would suggest is that you just take a look at the program for yourself and figure out what you think. You may agree with me, you may disagree with me, but let's read through it together. I'll leave links in the description down below for you to be able to go through it. So the first thing that you would take a look at here is this is Apple's self-service repair store over here. And so what we can do is we can order parts and tools. You have manuals available. So let's just say I want to get access to something. So the first thing I notice, I can select an iPhone. Let's say I select the iPhone 12 and let's say I select the display. One of the first things that is cool is that you can buy the original screen. More importantly than you being able to buy the original screen yourself, is that they make av available access to all of the tools that you could possibly need to want to do the job just as well as it's done at the factory. So you have adhesive, you have the adhesive cover, you have the, um, the adhesive cutter, you have all the screwdrivers, you have a display press. Now, the display itself is sealed into the phone with this liquid resistant adhesive on the sides. And even though you can buy third party cuts of adhesives and kind of push it with your fingers, it's never going to be the same type of liquid resistant seal you're going to get if you use one of their tools. And if you want to, you can rent this expensive toolkit or you can actually buy the tools if you want to use them in the future. Again, they're a little expensive, but I think it's fair for what it is you're getting. So the fact that I can buy the exact same tool that Apple's using to get a factory liquid resistant seal. That's pretty cool. Like, I mean, that's not something I saw available for my Samsung phone that I could buy the exact same tool that they're using for this as an end consumer in this easy manner and have a manual available that tells me how to do it. I fixed my Samsung phone recently and um, yeah, that, that's not exactly a factory seal. I'll leave it at that. So the fact that they're making all those tools available, that's pretty cool. And I think they deserve to be commended for that. That is a good thing. Now let's go on to the rest. So when you take a look through this program, there's something you probably noticed when I was in the drop down menu looking for my product. And when you click iPhone and you go iPhone, we get iPhone 12, iPhone 12 mini, Pro 13, mini, Pro, and SE. Um, if you have an iPhone 11 Pro or an iPhone 11 and you want a battery or a screen, um, sucks to be you. If you have an iPhone XS Max or you have an iPhone XR, you have an iPhone 10 or an 8 or a 7 or a 6, uh, well, sucks to be you. Now, when we t think about the phones that are more likely to be the phones that we want to service, is it going to be phones that are a couple of years old or the newest phones? In my experience, it tends to be the phones that are a little bit older. Those are the ones that you've had more time with, more time to drop, more time for the battery to degrade, more time for you to wear out the charge port, which by the way, you may have noticed is not actually available as a fixable part in this list. So if we go through, you got camera, display, bottom speaker, and battery. Now, one of the things that I was joking about with Samsung's repair program the other day is that with Samsung's repair program, you can buy a charge port, but you can't buy the battery. With Apple's repair program, you can buy a battery, but you can't buy a charge port. So if you combine these two programs together, you actually get a functional, usable repair program. Charge ports do break. These are repairs. We have done thousands of charge port repairs at our store for many different devices because you plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug it. It's, you know, it's something that is going to break at some point. And the fact that you're not even able to buy that here is something that I would be critical of them for. Many people will say, well, why do you guys not use original parts? Or people just want to be able to use knockoff parts. Or, you know, these, play, these sh crappy repair, no-name repair shops or people fixing their own phones are going to not use original parts. And one of the reasons that people are going to Mobile Centrics or eBay in order to buy their, their charging port flexes is because you literally can't get it from the manufacturer. If you want an original charge port flex, sucks to be you. Uh, that is missing. As well as something like, let's say, your power button stops working. Very common repair. Well, sucks to be you. Your volume button stops working, sucks to be you. So there are many parts that are missing from these programs. In addition, there are many phones missing from these programs, but above all, there are many devices missing from these programs. You may notice that uh, my business DBA is Mac Laptop Repair Specialist. And um, yeah, when it comes to Macs, the product drop-down menu leaves something to be uh, desired there. 
Now, the next up is batteries. Some people have talked about batteries, pricing, and stuff like that. When you take a look, you'll see that a battery is available at $69 and it's $44.85 after credit when you return the original battery. I actually think I understand why they're doing this. I think that your average consumer today probably thinks of a lithium ion battery the same way they think of the batteries in their remote control or whatever. You know, they just throw it in the garbage like you did with old alkaline batteries when they are done and they do not want a lithium ion battery ending up on the bottom of a garbage along with something sharp and getting tossed out and then blowing up inside of a um, inside of a sanitation truck or something like that. So what I imagine they're doing, and I think the reason they have such a high replacement part return credit on a battery, which they're likely not refurbishing, let's be real here, is because they want to incentivize people to send back the battery because if they don't send, because they do not want that battery ending up in the garbage. They want to strongly incentivize you, even if you lack the knowledge about lithium ion batteries, to understand why you shouldn't just throw that in away in the garbage, to have a financial incentive to send it back to them. That's still a bit expensive. Without the incentive, 69 bucks, that's pretty much what you're paying at the Apple store for them to replace the battery for you, and you gotta do the work yourself. And $44.85, it's not horrible for an original battery. Like, again, it's not horrible. You know, like, BlackBerry used to sell uh, their batteries for around, it used to cost like around that to get an OEM BlackBerry battery in the day. And this is, it's not the worst pricing in the world, it's not the best pricing in the world, but you know, they're making the original available, which is, is uh, you know, it's, it's commendable in some way. The next up over here is going to be their own PR document, which I, I thought was particularly interesting. So they released a PR document that goes over a lot of different things here. This is expanding access to service and repairs for Apple devices. Now, this document has many, many citations. So like over here, for this one statement, they have five citations. And I think it's important to keep in mind the amount of citations they will use for certain statements and the lack of citation they will use for other statements. So just to scroll down over here, and this is where you'll see that I'm not editing this video, I still haven't found my damn dongle. Here we go. Apple believes that the safest and most reliable repairs are those handled by a trained technician using genuine parts, tools, processors, and diagnostics. And all of this is, um, there is zero citation. This is something that I've brought up many times, is that when they will say that the repairs are best done by the manufacturer, listen, a lot, I imagine a lot of money and time went into writing this paper because there are many sentences that have numerous citations. So I appreciate the fact that they're not able to come up with a single citation for the fact that the... Um, that the safest and most reliable repairs are the ones that are done by them. But the part that really, really kind of stung me here, that just kind of seemed like a, my opinion, just kind of like a backhanded slap in the face while they're pretending to do something that is repair friendly here, is what, with their mention of why they're not releasing schematics for use in board level repairs. Because by the way, if you want to be able to do a board level repair, you're still using ZXW tool or some crack schematics because you're not getting access to any of that via this program. It says, why isn't Apple releasing schematics for use in board level repairs? Industry and repair experts agree that the vast majority of board level repairs are best performed in a factory environment using specialized equipment capable of producing high quality, reliable and repeatable results to meet original equipment manufacturer standards. They have two citations. We're going to go over those in a moment. Boards are packed with many small components necessary for the device's proper functioning. For example, ball grid array components require specialized equipment for their repair that is restricted to factory or advanced repair requirements due to its cost and complexity. Therefore, board level repairs, particularly those involving solder components, are best performed by certified technicians who use control processes, calibrated factory equipment, and rigorous testing. So one of the first things that I think is really interesting to take a look at here is one of their citations over here is from, uh, actually two of them appear to be from CTIA. CTIA is a trade association that has routinely lobbied against right to repair as a trade association based on what I believe to be misinformation and bullshit, and we have debunked their testimony many times before. I will leave links to these videos down below for anybody who is interested in hearing CTIA statements and then my responses to those statements. Secondly, I find it very interesting that when they're talking about the, you know, the, the, how proper the repair process is, and how much more proper it is when it's done by the manufacturer that they're citing a group of people that have probably never soldered a thing in their life. I would, I would throw down any single day that I believe anybody at this store will do a better quality, better speed board repair after three shots of Everclear than anybody at CTIA would ever be able to do. I stand behind that. I mean that. And when it comes to things like BGA equipment being so expensive and unattainable, 99% of the repairs that I do on this channel can be done with a rework station that I sell on my store on the internet for less than 300 bucks. 
You can buy BGA rework stations that are admittedly not as good as that one, but still kind of get the job done for like $150. So this idea that that stuff, that, that this type of work is so difficult because of the expense of the equipment, in my opinion, is asinine and bullshit because again, you have over 600 videos of me doing these repairs with equipment that you can buy for what is like, oh, you know, one week paycheck at Model Sporting Goods. And um, then you have to go over the, the claims on quality as well. So I have gone over when it comes to big chip rework that requires a, um, a more proper machine like a Zalmo ZMR 6200C or something like that for let's say a CPU or a GPU. I've gone over the procedure that we use here at this repair shop in order to do these repairs. I documented that about eight years ago and I also documented on this channel the way that Apple does it because Apple had to do a lot of repairs on the 2011 MacBook Pro and they released that recall program around April or March of 2015. And uh, this is something that I covered in my Truth About Apple's Engineering video over here and I will play it for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a motherboard that Apple refurbished that looks like many other boards that Apple has refurbished with their supposedly superior process in their factory or whatever, I am going to compare what the area under the CPU looks like that has not been reworked with the area under the GPU that has been reworked and you tell me what you think of what it is that you see. Sad. Happy. Sad. Happy. Sad. Happy. Sad. What you're seeing there is the area of the board underneath the graphics chip it has this kind of brown barbecued looking haze to it whereas the area under the CPU which has not been reworked still has its natural silver shine. That comes from the fact that they used too much heat in too short a time period or that they used too little heat over way too long a time period. Either way that means that the profile they were using for their BGA rework was not proper because the board should not look like it had been through a barbecue. In spite of that, if you look at many of the A20-2915s and A20-2914s for refurbished by Apple between the time period of 2015 until the program ended around late 2016, what you'll notice is that they look like they've been through a barbecue. Whereas the boards that I fixed on video that I show you when I'm done with them on the video do not have that look to it. It's because we have believe it or not, a better BGA rework process because we are not trying to pump out the maximum amount of boards for the lowest amount of money. And this is something that I just, I don't understand why there was the need to include that. So not only are they saying up front, hey, we're not going to include schematics, board views, diagrams of this program so that people like Lewis can do the job that they've been doing for the past 10 years, but we are also going to cite a industry trade association that does not do board repair to tell you why you are worse at doing board repair and make things up and gaslight you at the same time by implying that we are better at it when there is more than enough proof by anybody who wants to open their MacBook if they have an A1286 from 2011 that they've ever refurbished by Apple that their BGA rework process is not particularly great. There is a, it, just stuff in this, and you can read through the rest of this document over here, which in, in, just in my opinion is just a PR fluff piece that was included along with this program. And I guarantee you that there will not be a single member of the tech press that you will see that will actually go through this document and point things out like this to just demonstrate how this was, yet in my opinion, a PR stunt and really not something uh, it, that is designed in any way, shape, or form to move repairability forward in a serious way. Do I like the fact that they released uh, screens, batteries, and the equipment to do it? Yes. Do I think that a program that 15 years into the iPhone's existence covers the 12, the 13, and the SE is a particularly good program when it doesn't even include all the parts necessary to do many of the repairs that we do on a regular basis? No. Many of you may say, well, you know, you're asking too much too soon. You're being greedy. It's not perfect, so I guess it... How much is this company worth? The first iPhone came out in 2007. It's 2022, bro. Is it, like, is it really not that much to ask? That, is it really too much to ask that we be able to get access to a charge board or a power button or parts to an iPhone 11 or a 10? Or the, again, you know, there's a reason that I put schematics or die on a t-shirt six years ago. The reason I put schematics or die on a t-shirt is so that in the future, I wouldn't be able to come up with some, you know, pretend that some half-assed compromise meant that we actually won anything. This is a step in the right direction. It's definitely a step in the right direction. Don't get me wrong. But the amount of time that it took to get this very, very, very teeny tiny incremental step. No, where's the MacBooks? Where's the charge ports? Where's the iPhone 11s and 10s? Where's the schematics? Huh. It, does, it just doesn't seem like the victory that, um, that many are making it out to be. In my opinion, this program has one purpose and one purpose only. To throw off potential right to repair legislation by saying, look, we're already doing it. Look for like two of the 13 or 15 different iPhones we've released, 
you can get parts to them now. I mean, yeah, you, you can't get something like the power button that you need to turn it on. You can't get something like the charge port that you need to charge it. And you can't get parts to a MacBook. You can't get parts to an iMac. You can't get parts to a desktop Mac. You can't get the schematics and the board used to fix the boards. But look, we have a little PR document that tells you why you don't really want that stuff anyway, because it's so expensive to buy a $280 rework station to be able to fix it. Meanwhile, they're selling a $260 tool that you can use to press the screen into the phone. This is... Um, in my opinion, this is a corporate shitpost. Uh, is it progress? Yes, it's some progress. But after 15 years, this is really the best you can do. In my opinion, this program is designed as something that they can show legislators to say, look, we already did what you asked. Why are you forcing us to do anything else? Why are you trying to... You don't want to write legislation. You want to go home and do nothing. Don't, don't come up with and draft a bill. Just go back to what you're doing and let us do what we're doing and leave us the F alone. I think that's the intention of this program. If this program were actually intended to be useful, it would have parts to phones that are, you know, like two and a half years old. You know, that the, the point at which phone batteries actually start to die. Uh, you would have parts available to an iPhone XS, or maybe, dare I say it, an iPhone 8. You have a charge port, you have a power button, you'd have parts to MacBooks, you'd have parts to iMacs, you'd have chips, schematics, diagrams, everything else. There's a reason that all of that stuff is missing, because this was never intended to be a, pro, a repair program. It was intended to be a PR stunt. And from what I'm reading from the tech press, the way most of the tech press is covering this in an uncritical manner, it's doing its job. Because your average person walks away from this thinking, oh, I read a The Verge title that said that Apple released a self-repair program. So I guess everything that Lewis has been talking about for the past 10 years, ah, oh, they already did it. I don't know why he's still bitching. That's the point of this. That's what they're looking to get done. Um, and what I would ask of you is to uh, not allow them to get that done. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. My apologies for not having my usual sense of excitement and enthusiasm while I'm doing this video. Today was a particularly crappy morning for me and uh, it's likely going to be a particularly crappy day. So I just, uh, I honestly wish this news had come out just about any other day so that I could do this video with a heightened sense of enthusiasm or excitement because it is a piece of noteworthy news that I do think deserves a little bit more attention than what I have given it in this video. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.